Good morning, 4th grade. As you know, this Thursday, you guys will have your Unit 6 test about ecosystems and food webs. Um, to help you prepare for your test, I have been visiting different homerooms, having study sessions, and also having a review. Um, today, what we are going to do is we are going to use our different resources our study guide and Odulu to review the information that will be on the test. Now to find the study guide, you have to go click on classwork. Once you are on classwork, you will come to this page. You're going to scroll down to test review. Under test review, you have unit 6 Quizlet flashcards, which is a great tool to help you study your vocabulary words. And then under that, you have your Unit 6 Study Guide, Ecosystems and Food Web. This study guide you can use to help you study for the test. There is a version available in Spanish and a version available in English. Let's look at the English version now. So this is the study guide for our Unit 6 Food Webs test. The test will be this Thursday, May 6th. Your job is to review these words so that you know what each of them are once you see them on the test. Let's start out by reviewing ecosystem is. An ecosystem is a community of organisms that interact with each other in its non-living environment. And there are many different ecosystems. There are deserts, there are oceans, there are forests. Those are some of the different ecosystems which we explored during our last year. Now, within those ecosystems, there are different food webs. Food webs are a tool that describe how different organisms relate in each ecosystem. Food webs have arrows that show who is eating the food and how the energy is being transferred. Now, within a food web, different organisms can play different roles. For example, there are producers. Producers are all those organisms that are able to make their own food. Producers like fruits, plants, flowers, trees, algae are able to make their own food using light energy from the sun and through the process of photosynthesis are able to transfer are able to convert that light into sugar to help them grow producers do not need to eat or consume other animals they produce or make their own food when they make their own food they are able to grow and become food or nutrients for other organisms and ecosystems. And then comes in consumers. Consumers, these are organisms that cannot make their own food. They have to consume or eat to get their energy. Some consumers like to eat certain plants, other consumers like to eat animals, or some consumers like to eat both. Some examples of consumers are birds, rabbits, lions, grasshoppers. All these different animals are consumers because they have to eat other organisms. Now let's go take a close look at these different types of consumers since there are different types and different roles that they play. Our first type of consumer are herbivores. Herbivores are a type of consumer. These herbivores are consumers who only eat plants. For example, rabbits are consumers that are herbivores. Rabbits have to consume a plant for their energy, but the food that they like to eat are, are usually is usually grass that makes a rabbit an herbivore same as goats and rats these are all herbivores because they only eat plants within our consumers there are different types of consumers another example are carnivores carnivores are those consumers who eat meat 
carnivores are also consumers. The difference between a carnivore and a cons and a herbivore is that a the diet of a carnivore consists of meat, meaning that they will eat other animals for their energy. Some examples of carnivores are, are owls, lions, and wildcats. These organisms have to consume or eat other organisms for their energy. However, they are known as carnivores because they eat meat. And then something that we call omnivores. Omnivores are also consumers. However, omnivores are different from carnivores and herbivores. Omnivores are not that very picky. They will eat both meat, like, like different animals, but will also eat um, different producers like grass or flowers. Some examples of omnivores are bears, humans, and chickens. Omnivores will eat plants and meat. Our last role in a food web are decomposers. These are very important because decomposers are what help finish off the food web. At the beginning of our school year, we talked about how soil is made up of different things. And one of those things was humus. We learned that humus is made up of dead plants and animals. Well, guess who helps those dead animals and plants break down to tiny pieces? It's decomposers. Decomposers are organisms like bacteria and fungus who break down dead plants and animals back into small nutrients so that they can go back into the soil. When they are back in the soil, they are able again to help the producers be able to grow. It is one big cycle. Let's take a look at this example of a food web to identify what different roles each organism has. I have put colored boxes to identify each role. Orange is for producers. Pink is for consumers. Notice how there is a big pink box and inside of this pink box, there we have herbivores which are in green, omnivores, which are in blue, and carnivores, which are in red. Let's take a close look at producers. Can you share on Edpuzzle an example of a producer that are on our food web? Thank you for sharing your thinking. If you said skunk cabbage, the stinging net nettle, the sicka spruce, grasses, a red elderberry that is correct all these plants are examples of producers these producers are able to make food using the sun energy and help themselves grow when our producers are grown they are able to help other organisms and ecosystems for food for example herbivores can you name some herbivores that we see on our food web Thank you for sharing your thinking. If you said porcupine, red squirrel, or deer mouse, or salmon, that is correct. These are all examples of herbivores. As you can see, if we follow, we see the porcupine, we notice that it is eating a skunk cabbage. Or our deer mouse, who eats grasses and sedges. These organisms are known as herbivores because they only eat plants for their energy. But our food web does not end there. There are other animals like carnivores who will eat some of our herbivores. Can you guys name the carnivore that is in our food web? If you said the mar marten, that is correct. A marten it is a carnivore. This organism eats salmon, red squirrel, and deer mouse to get their energy. It has to consume or eat other organisms for energy. And then we also have omnivores. On Edpuzzle, can you name an example of an omnivore? 
Thank you. If you said grizzly bear or humans, that is correct. Grizzly bear and humans are examples of omnivores. For example, our grizzly bear, we see that it also eats skunk cabbage, but it also eats salmon. The same for our human. Our human eats the needle, but it can also eat, it will also eat salmon. All herbivores, carnivores, and omnivores are all consumers. They have different choices what they like to eat. Some may like to eat meat. Some may not like to eat meat, but they are all consumers because they, they need to consume or eat another organism to get their energy. Now that we have reviewed our study guide, let's go back to Google Classroom so that we can use our Odalu site to study for our tests. If you scroll down to Tuesday, you will get to see test six review game. You'll see it says review for Thursday test using the auto link below. Click the blue log in button. Your username is science underscore Melvin and the password is science for me. You click on the link. Once you click on the link, this screen should pop up. You click log in at the top of that blue button. You use your username, which is science underscore Melvin. And your password is science for capital S, the number four, and then me, M-E. And you log in. And then once you are here, you will see Unit 6 Ecosystems and Food Webs. Click play. And let's do a quick play. But you guys have the option to do a bubble breakout, memory melon, pixel art attack, archery, any of these games while you are while you are doing the practice test, you can complete. I'm gonna do a quick play just so that we can answer the questions. Our first question says, all consumers eat meat. Is that true or false? Answer that on Ed Puzzle now. If you said false, that is correct. All consumers do not eat meat. There are some herbivores that like to eat plant and even omnivores that eat both plant and meat. So all consumers eat meat is false. All right, question two. An organism that makes its own food is called a is it a producer, consumer, organism, or environment? Answer on Ed Puzzle now. If you said producer, that is correct. A producer makes or produces its own food. Question three. Look at the food chain below. It's above. If it if a disease were to strike the snake population in this food chain, what will happen to the population of hawks? So let's think about it. If there was a disease that killed out all our snakes, what will happen? Will the population of hawks increase, meaning it will go up? Will the population of the hawks decrease, meaning it will go down? Or will the population of the hawks, would they stay the same? Nothing changes. Share your thinking on Ed Puzzle now. If you said the population of hawks would decrease, that is correct. Because if a sn if there is no more snakes, what is the hawk going to eat? It will starve. It will start to go hungry. And eventually, some hawks will begin to die out, meaning there will be less hawks in the, envir in the environment. What type of organism is missing from this food web? Producer? consumer, carnivore, or decomposer. We have green grass, which um, can be eaten by a snail, and then a snail can be eaten by a frog, okay? But a frog can also be eaten by a snake, who is then eaten by an owl, or a frog can just be eaten by an owl. Or grass can be eaten by a grasshopper, 
A grasshopper can either be eaten by a snake or a frog. Um, and the frog, as we saw, can be eaten by a snake or an owl. So when I was reading that food chain, that food web, I saw green grass. And I know that is a producer. I saw a couple consumers like the snail, frog, owl, snake, and grasshopper. I saw some carnivores because I know the snake eats a grasshopper. And also the owl and the frog are examples of carnivores. But what is missing from this food web? If you said decomposer, that is correct. There is no decomposers in this food web. Question five, true or false? A food web uses arrows to show how food and energy flow through the different organisms. Is that true or false? We've seen a couple of different food webs that have arrows. Share your thinking, is it true or false? If you said true, that is correct. We look at food web, we notice that it has different arrows pointing from different organisms to show how, what animal eats who to get energy. Question six is asking us, match the consumer to the correct food. So we know there are three different types of consumers, herbivore, carnivore, and omnivore. Let's match up the herbivore. We match up the herbivore with the broccoli, carrots, and onion, or we match it with the carrots, burger, and corn, or with the chicken and the burger. Share your thinking on Edpuzzle now. If you said with the broccoli, carrots, corn, and onion, that is correct. How about the carnivore? Who is the carnivore being matched up to? Is it the carrots, burger, and corn? Or is it just the chicken and the burger? If you said the chicken and the burger, that is correct. Carnivores only eat meat. And then our last one is the omnivore. The omnivore is going to be matched up to box number two, which shows carrots, a burger, and corn. Omnivores like to eat both vegetables and meat. An organism that has to eat organisms for energy is called. What do we call those organisms that need to eat or consume other organisms for energy? Is it a consumer? Is it an ecosystem? Is it a food web or a producer? If you said consumer, that is correct. Consumers have to eat or consume for energy. Let's look at this food chain. Which choice is correctly explaining the path of energy through the food web? We know that, pl that plant producers like plants start out our energy. If we follow our plant to the its first arrow, we notice that it goes to a rabbit, a rabbit eat plants for energy. Now, once the rabbit eats the plant, there are different carnivores that can also eat the rabbit. First, we have our first arrow, which is pointing to the cougar. And then we also have another animal that is, another arrow that is pointing to the mountain lion. So that is how the energy transfers from the plant, rabbit, into the cougar and mountain lion. But, the plant can also be eaten by a deer. If a deer eats a plant, a deer can also be eaten by a cougar and a mountain lion. So let's look at our choices. Which one of these choices is correctly showing how the energy is being transferred through the food web? So our first option says plant, rabbit, deer. Plant, rabbit, deer. Is that correct? Our second choice says cougar, rabbit, wolf. Cougar, rabbit. Is there even a wolf on this food web? So it can't be that one. Choice number three says wolf, plant, deer. 
We just looked at our food web and we didn't see any wolves on our food chain. So it can't be choice three. Or is it choice four? Plant, rabbit, cougar. Plant, rabbit, cougar. Share your answer on Edpuzzle now. If you said plant, rabbit, cougar, that is correct. We see our plant. It is eaten by the rabbit and the rabbit is eventually eaten by the cougar. Good. Oh, for question nine, it is a bit tricky because I wasn't able to get the whole picture. But at the top of this food web, we have a grizzly bear, human, and a marten. Now, let's look at the food web. Identify who consumes the red squirrel. Is it the porcupine? Is it the skunk cabbage? Is it the grizzly bear or is it the marten? Who eats the red squirrel? Well, I see the red squirrel is right here. What organism is consuming or eating the red squirrel? If you said marten, that is correct. We see that our red squirrel is here and it goes up to the marten. It shows that the marten eats the red squirrel for energy. The can't be the porcupine. There is no arrows pointing from the red squirrel to a porcupine. And plus, a porcupine is an herbivore. Um, and it can't be a skunk cabbage. The skunk cabbage doesn't need to eat anything. He's a producer. He makes his own food. And it's not the grizzly bear. The grizzly bear has other food that it likes to eat. Good job. So if you guys were able to answer these questions and got them correct, you are going to do very well on the test. Remember, you guys can always study using Odaloo. If you would like to take another practice test by yourself, you are more than welcome to go to Odaloo, use the login information at the beginning of that I showed you at the beginning, and you can do your own practice and you can choose to play with these different games. Remember, I am also available from office hours from 2 o'clock all the way to 3.30. If you want to come play Odalu with me, if you want to um, be on Quizlet, we can study together. Uh, if you have any questions, just visit me then. Have a great Tuesday. Remember to study, and I will see you tomorrow. Thank you, and have a good day.